Hi everyone! Welcome to the Piano Keys. I'm so glad that you're here. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to play the first two parts of For Elise. They're basically the most famous parts. There's a middle section to this piece that most people uh, don't hear, and it's pretty dramatic and technically challenging, so I'm going to leave that part out. As usual, I'll show you how to play the left hand and the right hand and put the hands together because that's actually the fastest way to learn. So if you want to learn how to play the famous sections of For Elise, keep watching. The left hand in part one is super easy. And there are only three things that the left hand has to learn and then it just repeats those three things. So the first thing we do is find A. So find three black keys and go to the white one that's here with your fifth finger. You play A, second finger on E to the right of the two black keys. And then thumb is on the A that's up an octave from where you started. Okay, let's do that. One more time. Notice that I'm not holding on to any of the keys. I hold on just long enough to get to the next key and then I let go. It's like I'm shifting the weight between one finger and the next. Kind of like when you're walking, you shift the weight from one foot to the other so you can move forward. Same thing here, see that? So you don't have to be able to reach the whole thing at once. From here, you take your pinky and you jump it way down to the low E. Then find the E an octave above, use your thumb on it. Now you're going to pivot over, see that? Kind of rolling over on the, the nail part of my thumb, and that's perfectly okay. Roll over. Take your second finger, find the middle one of the three black keys, that's G sharp, and play it. So I'll show you that. It's like you're folding your hand like that. And then you go back and play the first thing again. So all together, part one looks like this. repeat that whole thing. Okay, so part one all together looks like this. Play it again. That's it. <laughs> Right hand has a little bit more to do in part one than the left hand did. Find your fourth finger on E, again to the right of the two black keys. You're going to play E, fourth finger, and D sharp is the black key directly to the left. Use your third finger on it. And then you do it again. So twice through. 
Then you go back to E, but you don't go to the D sharp this time. You find B with your thumb, that's to the, to the right of the three black keys. Then take your fourth finger down one note to D, C, third finger, and then the thumb moves down one note from where it was to A. So I'll show you all that together. E, D sharp, again, E, D sharp, go back to E, but this time no D sharp, B, D, C, A. From here, pick up the thumb, go to middle C. Remember, middle C is the C that's in the middle of the piano where the writing on your keyboard is. So you play C, first finger, E, second finger. Now you'll have to stretch your hand out just a little bit. Fourth finger on A, and then fifth finger on B. Let's do just that part. C, E, A, B. A little bit faster. Let's put it together from the very beginning. E, fourth finger. Go down to C. From here, your thumb should be right around where E is, and that's good because we're going to play it. Play E, first finger, G sharp, that's the middle one of the three black keys, second finger, fourth finger on B, fifth finger on C. Let's play the whole thing from the beginning. From here, you're going to repeat a lot of what you just did, but first you'll add an E on your thumb, then stretch up to the, the first note that you played, which is E, fourth finger. If you can't reach it, just pick it up. It's fine. Okay? If you can reach it, that's fine too. So E, go back and do that again, just like the beginning. Do you see how repetitive this is? Go back to C. Now it changes. You still play E with your thumb, but this time you don't play G sharp like you did the first time. What you do is you stretch your fourth finger to C, play it, and then just step down three notes. So that's the second ending of the first part. Here is the repetition of part one, where you start on the low E. is the ending part. Okay, so here it is from the very beginning. E, fourth finger. Down to C. E. Now play that same E again and stretch or jump either way. Here's that second ending. Okay, I'll do it once with no talking. Right hand starts by itself on the very last note of this little idea, which is A, that's when the left hand comes in with the A. And then the right hand holds while the left hand plays and then lift on that last A. See that? Prepare your left hand. 
both A's play together. Lift. And you're gonna lift because we're moving. All right? One more time. Now the right hand goes to C and the left hand lifts right at that moment. So it's like they're transferring, kind of like, um, what do you call it? Like a relay race. So the left hand hands, it, hands the whatever it is over to the right hand, okay? Then the right hand plays. And again, on the last note, left hand plays the E. And again, the right hand lifts on the last note of the, of the left hand. I'll show you that again. So let's do it from the beginning. Lift and move, lift and move, left hand. Right hand lifts, and then play the E while the left hand lifts again. And on the last note, the left hand plays. And the right hand lifts on the last note. So it's like the hands are transferring the idea back and forth. I'll do all that with no talking. <laughs> Remember that it repeats almost the same way. The right hand plays the E by itself and then goes back to what it was doing before. Again, on the last note, the left hand joins. Right hand lifts and moves. Left hand lift and move. Here's where the right hand changes. Left hand still plays the A, and the right hand lifts. Okay, I'll do that whole thing, no talking. Now I'll play it um, more realistically. That was just super duper slow so that you can see what's happening, but it really should sound more musical. Here you repeat the entire thing. Left hand starts on C with your fifth finger, and then G, second finger, first finger on middle C. From here, take that fifth finger and jump it down to G. Find the octave G with your thumb. Remember how we were folding the, the hand in the first part? We're gonna do the same thing. So from here, you go down to A, fifth finger, and then second finger on E, A. Let's do that from the C. C, G, C, go 
down to G. G again. Fold your hand over. Then A. Now you're going to play a bunch of E's in a row. Low E with your fifth finger. Up an octave with your first. So E, E, then jump up. To the next octave E with second finger. It's almost like you're pointing at the note and you get it. So it goes. Then same E but your but your fifth finger goes on it and then up an octave. Okay so E, E, point at that E, play that E and then up an octave. From here, you play the beginning notes that the right hand played, but you're going to play with the left hand. Third finger on D sharp, second finger on E. Then you do it again, and that's that. So let's do it from the beginning of this part. Right hand, second finger on B. And then you step up until you run out of fingers. Now lift, first finger on G, reach up, fifth finger on F, and then step down, three notes. So G, reach up to F, E, D, then you'll play that same pattern down one note, starting on F, reach up to E, D, C, then you do it one more time, a note lower, E, D, C, B. So from the beginning of this part, it looks like this, second finger on B, step up until you run out of fingers, now here's that pattern that goes downward. That started on G, we're going to start at one note lower, F. And all the other notes are one lower as well. And then on E, okay, one more time, B, C, D, E. Here starts that pattern. By the way, that pattern that repeats lower each time, that's called a sequence in music. So we're going to play that sequence. G, F, E, D, now on F, F, E, D, C, and last time on E, E, D, C, B. From here, you play E with your thumb. And then the pinky finds the E that's an octave higher and plays it. Again, we're transferring the weight from one finger to the next. So you don't have to hold on. Then where that pinky was, you switch to first finger, play it, and go up another octave. Okay? So all together, those E's look like this. Same E. Okay? Let's do it from the beginning of that section. Here's the sequence. Here are those octave E's. Now you go back to the beginning notes, D sharp and E. And you'll play third finger on D sharp, fourth finger on E. So once by itself, and then you'll do three in a row. Two, three. And we're going to stop there right now. <laughs> 
So let's see that whole section. Here we go, starting on B, second finger, and I won't say anything this time. Right hand starts by itself. Remember how in the first section on the last note of the right hand, the left hand joined? We're going to do that again. Here we go. B, second finger in the right hand, left hand, C, fifth finger. Here's the last note, so left hand's going to join. And right hand lifts again on the last note of the left hand. So there are a lot of patterns going on here in terms of how the hands move and how they join each other. Let's do that again. Together. Lift. Now, G, when the right hand plays G, the left hand lets go and moves down to low G. Last note, hands together. Lift. Let's do it from the beginning of this section. Lift. 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 Now we move down one note, remember? And then the left hand picks up as soon as the right hand plays. Goes down to A on the last note. Play A. Right hand picks up. Go down one more. E. Left hand is moving down to E. Let's do that much. I won't talk this time. Notice that when I lift my uh, hands, I'm not lifting from the fingertips. I'm lifting from the wrists. That gives me a lot more freedom, and I can stay relaxed the whole time that I play. So now, we left off on here, on E. Remember those series of E's that each hand plays? This is the part. Here we go. Left hand by itself. Remember it floats. Then the right hand takes over that same E. Then left hand plays the same E's. Then the right hand takes over that E and up an octave. It's like they're handing the E's over to each other. So from that section, B, second finger, left hand, um, E, fifth finger. So E, E, same E, 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 same two E's. Right hand takes over that E and plays one higher. Let's go from the beginning of this section. Remember, the left hand's gonna play D sharp and E. It just happens to be right there, so keep it there. D sharp, E, right hand kind of pushes aside the left hand. Hey, it's my turn. And then left hand plays. Notice the left hand is above the right hand. Don't go under, it's over. Then left hand, then right hand. So, looks like this. Left, it's above. I'm gonna move my hand just so you can see, but normally you wouldn't move it. So I'll, I'll show you one time incorrectly just so you can see what I'm doing. Left, right, left, right. Now you're not gonna do all those weird moves, okay? Um, you're gonna just 
keep like that. The left hand's gonna hover over the right hand, and then the right hand's gonna kind of sneak out of the way. So, left, right, left, right, and then remember the right hand does it three times in a row, so that was one, and you're gonna do two more. So I'll show you from the E's again. Right hand is on B, left hand is on E. E, E, same E. Add an octave. Same two E's. Same E, add an octave. Now here's where they take turns. I think I counted that right. It's really hard to do this very slowly. Okay, let's do from the beginning of part two. Here we go. Here it is a little bit faster and a little more musical. Now this part is easy because you already know it. <laughs> It's basically the first part all over again. So remember, we left off the last section like this. One, two, three, and then you play it like the beginning. Exactly the same. this part three but it's really part one all over again from here you go back and repeat parts two and parts three so I'll play part two and part three and then I'll repeat it just so it makes sense here we go doesn't actually end here um, but that's where I'm gonna end it so you want to slow down toward the end to make a nice ending so that it doesn't just stop abruptly and that was for Elise do you have a request for a tutorial let me know in the comments section or if you have any questions same place if you like this video click like and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel you can do that right now keep practicing and I'll see you soon bye